Hello everyone, this is Silence Did Good or Mr. 13 Things, depending on which channel I load this up to. And we're going to go through here some discussion of why the website we 4 d kids. And so my hope is that in the next short one or two videos I will explain the mathematics of three dimensions and four dimensions and mostly how when you approach life like kids playing an Xbox controller, you can go to some pretty high order math skills pretty quickly. To do that, I'm gonna try for the first time what someone said is Khan Academy Yellow. Um, again, I'm gonna point out there are a lot of great videos out on linear algebra and that's what we'll be talking about here, but we're gonna be talking about we for the kids and why that name and basically what we're going to be looking at is uh, linear algebra linear algebra what many of you hear about as matrices and vectors when we look at 4 4d kids the concept here is that Animation is basically dealing in three dimensions and then moving about with time. So let's first draw a set of axes that might throw you. And to do this, I'm going to show you what kids understand from day one. It's a little bit rough, but they understand that red is X. And they understand that green is Y. And they understand that blue is the Z or the elevation direction. So they have been playing and they understand these colors from the time they started playing in a 3D game controller. We, being everyone over a certain age who is not a gamer, are more likely to perceive the world, at least when we start talking about mathematics, in terms of something like an... This is X, this is Y, and what we typically don't even think about too much is that Z is coming out of the board at us. These are the same concepts, however, our kids won't see these three dimensions in generally in a math class until relatively uh, upper high school, but more likely in a collegiate level they see it in their game controller quite young. And so what we'll talk about here is how in fact mathematically you can go about in dealing in these three dimensions. So let me go with what we start knowing. Typically when we're learning in mathematics we learn about ordered pairs. We learn about X and Y. So ordered pairs for instance we see it that way. Later on, we start to see it perhaps X, Y, and Z, right? But we probably see it in black and white, and we don't really color differentiate or uh, anything like that. When you're dealing in a 3D world, it's probably best for kids to make the leap to start looking at things like this, X and Y. Or if they're going to look at it in three dimensions, X, Y, and Z. The reason perhaps that it hasn't been done in the past this way at lower levels could be typesetting, it could be history, but the fact is later on you can see that a column vectors are probably best and more best visualized in a column vector format. So these things are basically, these are both vectors, but this is more or less what we're going to call our, our vector format or our vector, right? format. So this would be a column vector. Right? Now, one caveat you're going to see as we go through here is the fact that when you add a fourth dimension, which is usually time, it would go here, but the reality is that when you're starting to do math calculations on um, using matrices and vectors, you very typically are going to add what's a scale factor here. So this becomes basically when we start dealing with the mathematics, 
x, y, z, and then a scale factor. So it's just the kind of a thing that here in Wisconsin we tack on um, certain things to our Bloody Marys. It's called a chaser. Um, but you just gonna get in the habit of tacking on a one here. All right, so let's now look at why is 4D mathematics possible for kids to do. Well, it starts with this fact that if you can take any vector or any point in space, it can be described as an X, a Y, and a Z. And again, you add the one there. You can start by multiplying it by essentially what would be considered the number one in a matrix format, which is called an identity matrix. It looks something like this. Not only does it look something like this, it looks exactly like this. And when you multiply these together mathematically, you typically get what's formed in x prime, y prime, z prime, and then the number one will always end up here if you haven't done it that way. And later on, you can see that this is best done by multiplying a row by a column a row by a column, a row by a column. This basically does something. It transforms this point. So this is the transformer. This is the transformee. When you do this, you're multiplying by the number one. And just like when you learn in math, the identity property of the number one is you multiply one times a, you get a, you get one times this point gets that point. So this is, these are the same point. So these turn out to be the same thing. Okay. So when identity is used, and that's the identity matrix, when that's used, these two are the same. So x, y, z, 1 is the same as x prime, y prime, z prime. So these are the same thing. However, later on, you're going to see that you can manipulate sets, and that sets are going to look like this. Sometimes you're going to manipulate those four. Sometimes you're going to manipulate those four. And sometimes you're going to manipulate these four, depending on which axis you're rotating about, whether you're rotating about the x-axis, about the y-axis, or about the z-axis. You're going to change sets of these. These will be for translating. So just let it be known and just kind of get accustomed to the fact that translating a single point or rotating a single point in 3D space is definable and doable with numbers that kids can manipulate and operations that they can do it and that they can do. So we'll go through the operations over time, but learning to kind of multiply a row by a column is probably best done first with a whole four by four matrix, perhaps, and just a four by one matrix, this being one point. Over time, as you realize, and we start talking about what engineering modeling is generally often about, it's about breaking the world up into a bunch of faces. So let's say an object. An object is going to be broken up into faces. The faces will be broken up into edges and the edges will be broken up into two endpoints and so in effect for any given line right you're just gonna have two of these points so as you start trying to manipulate the object and when I talk about manipulate translate rotate even in terms of shearing it or twisting it 
you're going to be dealing with just a bunch of calculations that are related in the end to translating or dealing with single points here through a whole set of different matrices. So the key thing looking forward is to perhaps get students to do some of this stuff right away with something as simple as their initials. So mine would be, I guess I'll do it S and D and G and probably having them pick out some points right on their letters right and then having them move them translate them or rotate them either about the z-axis or then about the x and the y-axis they're doing this already so if you start by having them manipulated here, they perhaps will see then the importance of the next step, which in some cases would be the first step in terms of understanding what are the numbers that fold into here to do the different operations that they've been doing since they were in second or third grade. So it all comes down to linear algebra, and I'll leave you with three great resources to learn linear algebra, but you probably are not going to take your kid to look at these, but we'll be connecting you up to these. They would be, in no particular order, Sal Khan, Gilbert Strang, and even, even though I haven't looked at the particular one, i got to put Herb Gross in here. who's got three or four courses all out on the line, all free. Gilbert Strang out at MIT Open Courses, Sal Khan at Khan Academy, and Herb Gross out at AdjectiveNounMath.com. So the concept of We 40 Kids is both mathematically and in other ways. I'm specifically coming out of a CAD or computer-aided drafting bent, if you would, is to get kids doing some pretty cool high order math that can they can see spatially in their gaming platform or their gaming environment, whatever that would be. Hopefully see with lasers, but also see mathematically. So later on when they do other things with matrices and vectors, they have some concept of their great power. I'll talk about where these are introduced in the common core of mathematics. Reasonable place to put them, but not a reasonable place when kids have started to game uh, in 3D from, let's face it, some of them since kindergarten. Not necessarily good, not necessarily bad, just what is in many parts, at least of the U.S. All right, so to review... The trick to this is to get thinking in three dimensions, which requires a matrix or a vector of four places. This one is the scale factor. So for now, we're going to say always one. Always one, and it's a scale factor. And to do 3D mathematics, you've got to have a 4D vector. Not to do it, but to efficiently do it, and we'll see later when we start trying to move things around. You need a 40 vector, you add the place. What you have here is the standard rotation scale matrix, and then a translation vector, and then once again, just kind of padding to make the matrix work. What we'll look at now is effectively what are the numbers that show up when you're starting to do some real basic rotation animations here and how kids can learn to grasp and understand and bond with, if you would, and not freak out over the irrational numbers known as the Pythagoras' number, or Pythagoras' number, and Theodorus' constant, and then also the, I think just those two actually, which will come up to do the rotations the kids want to do in the order of one hour's rotation of the Earth. So 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, but the kids need to quickly grasp that in real space, you don't talk degrees, you talk radians. And so one hour's turn is pi over 12 radians, 
and radiance have no units. Thanks for listening.